Welcome to Intro to Logic. The topic of this video is reductio ad absurdum. A reductio ad absurdum, or what some people might just call a reductio, is a method or a rule we use to derive the negation of an assumed sentence by deriving a contradiction with that assumption. Now I know that's kind of a mouthful, so let's look at an example for some clarification. Assume that we have the following two assumptions, if r then s, and if r then not s, and we're trying to arrive at not r. Now according to reductio, one method we could use to arrive at not r with these two assumptions is to begin a subproof, assume the opposite of the thing we want to derive, which in this case the opposite of not r is either r and or not not r. And what I mean by that is the opposite of any negated sentence is technically that sentence without the negation as well as that sentence with another negation added on, so a double negated r. So we can begin by assuming either of these. Um, let's just stick with r because that is a little less complicated and we can just say a for ra. So now that we have r as our um, another one of our assumptions, let's use that with line 1 to derive s with modus ponens. And we can derive not s with line 2 and r and line 3, modus ponens. And now we have a contradiction we can bring together s and not s with and introduction to arrive at a contradiction. And once we get a contradiction, reductio ad absurdum says that we can then arrive at the negation of the thing assumed. So since we assumed r, we can close out our reductio with not r, and we'd write the lines starting with the ones from which we, or the one from which we assumed um, for reductio, and ending with the contradiction we arrived at. So lines 3 through 6, RA, is how you would label line 7, and we've arrived at not R. Okay, so I know a lot has been said. Let's go through the big or main steps for doing a reductio. So the first thing that we did was assume the opposite of the letter that we're trying to, or the sentence we're trying to achieve. The second thing we did was derive a contradiction. And the third step was to close out the reductio and um, arrive at the negation of the assumed premise. So in this case we had assumed R and so we end with not R. Let's do a couple more examples to try to really start to understand exactly what a reductio is and how it works. Before delving into a few more examples, let's look at a few key terms that we'll have to be familiar with in order to do a reductio. One of the first ones we've come across is the term contradiction. In order to do a reductio we have to derive a contradiction. And a contradiction just is a conjunction where one conjunct is a sentence and the other conjunct is that sentence's opposite. So s and not s is a good example of a contradiction. Similarly we could say that if p then q and it's not the case that if p then q is one long contradiction. Not t and not not t is a contradiction. Not p and p is a contradiction, and so on. Another term that we've come across is opposites. Now the opposite of p is not p. 
And the opposite of not P could be either not not P or P. So notice that in the negation of any sentence has two kinds of opposites. One where we just have a double negation of that sentence, and the other where we drop the negation. The last term you need to be familiar with is negations. The negation of P is not P, and the negation of not P is not not P. So think of negations as simply taking a sentence and adding a negation in front of it. So whether we have um, a conditional, where we just add the negation in front of the whole conditional, or a single sentence letter like we saw with P and not P, we simply add the negation in front of whatever we had originally. So with P, we simply added the negation there. With not P, we added another negation here. And with if P then Q, we added a negation over the entire conditional. And we had to use parentheses to do that. So be sure to keep these terms in mind as we continue to practice reductios. Consider the following example. So we begin by writing our assumptions. We have if not P or T then R. If not P then not R and S. And our conclusion P. So let's try to use reductio to derive P. The first thing we're going to do is assume the opposite of what we're trying to arrive at. So since we have P down here, we know the opposite of P is not P. So we will draw a scope line, write not P, A for RA. Now that we have not P, we can use that to arrive at the following with modus ponens, not R and S, from 2, 3, MP. And then we could also use not P to get not P or T from 3 or introduction. We can then use that to derive R from 1, 5 modus ponens. And notice that we see a contradiction in the works. We can take not R from line 4 and elimination. And now we have the following contradiction, R and not R. Now be sure to keep in mind that you don't always have just one contradiction as an option. Usually you have many and all that matters is that you arrive at some contradiction. Uh, it doesn't have to be a specific one. If you can find any contradiction, that's sufficient for performing the reductio. Okay, so now we found a contradiction and according to reductio, once you find the contradiction, you can then close out the reductio and you derive the negation of the thing you assumed initially. So we initially assumed not P, which means that on line 9, we're now going to arrive at not not P. Oops, sorry, that should be a P. So the key here is that you can't assume not P and then close the reductio out with P. You have to first close it out with the negation of the negation, which is not not P. So it would be 3 through 8 RA. And then you do one more step to arrive at P. You would use line 9 and DN, double negation, to drop the two negations and arrive at the answer that you wanted initially, which is P. And the reason this is the case is just that according to the rule for reductio, um, you derive the negation of whatever you assumed. So keep that in mind and be sure to not mix up your negations and opposites. Remember, we begin by assuming the opposite of the thing that we're trying to find, and then you derive the negation of what you assumed. So one way to get used to this is just doing lots of practice problems and also memorizing the three main steps for doing a reductio.
This has been an intro to logic video on reductio ad absurdum. Be sure to keep practicing and we'll see you next time.